Final non-conference game of the regular season coming up inside Kinnick Stadium, Iowa and Colorado State for the first time ever. The Hawks have won 14 straight non-conference games. Welcome to Black and Gold Breakdown. Rob Brooks, pleased to be joined by Kevin Dolan as we uh, break down the game last weekend against Kent State. Look forward to Colorado State this weekend, and then it's all about the Big Ten after that. And, you know, Kevin, a lot of good things, I thought, uh, last Saturday inside Kinnick. Balanced offense. We saw some big plays in there. And, you know, we've talked about this for several years, but from a wide receiver standpoint, remember it's always been like three or four that have taken every right. single snap. Now six within the first quarter are getting into the mix. I know. You know, I remember Soup Campbell, used to be the wide receivers coach like 10 years ago. I said to him, how many, how many wide receivers do you want to have? He goes, well, I'd like to have six. And I go, how many do you have? He goes, I got four, which, which has been the norm. And as you mentioned, now we saw, we saw both Arlen Bruce and we saw Keegan Johnson in the first quarter, I think in the first series mm -hmm. of plays. So it, it's, it's nice to see, you know, that they have a mix there. like to see the passing game get a little more cohesive going forward, and, and you speak of uh, the positives. Uh, you know, I think the lines played really well, defensive, outstanding. But when you listen to Kirk Ferentz right after the game, he's immediately going to go to the correctable things, which were the penalties, eight penalties for 87 yards. Uh, he also talked about giving up the big plays in that second quarter. Uncharacteristic. By, by the defense. And then wasn't real happy about the way the reviews went, specifically the Tyrone Tracy review which I, I don't even really remember seeing that review and having, thinking that that had much of an impact, but it did with him. Well, sure. And if you're Tyrone T Tracy, it takes away a reception. Right. And a, a fairly big play. But you know, to his point, too, it was a situation where, you know, Tracy really made a football move, took a couple of steps, and then <laughs> maybe the ball hit the turf or whatever. But you know, it should have been, at worst, a catch and then recovered his own fumble. But... When I was down on the sideline, and I think this was a lot of the confusion, and the crowd was certainly wondering why the officials were huddled near midfield, just kind of hanging around right. during this review. Well, the monitors weren't working down on the field that they bring out onto the, the turf, and the referee gets to come over and take a look at it, which you can do in the Big Ten. Not every conference uh, has that ability. So... Sounds like they relied completely on upstairs, the replay official in the booth. So the guys making the calls weren't able to right. <laughs> look at the play, got reversed in a 30-7 to 7 game. It's not the end of the world, but, boy, if you're a wide receiver, you want that catch no, and you no, want that completion. No, no question. And, and, and Kirk Ferentz made the point right after uh, the game and his post game, and again in his Tuesday news conference that, you know, the final say should be the guy with the white hat. Yep. And And – you were the one who told me just today that those he, he, he wasn't able to review. So, it, you know, it kind of takes away a little of that power that you want to give to that guy. Uh, one other thing I wanted to mention in his post game, he, he mentioned that he kind of realized that he had 70 players on his team that had never been through a spring practice until this year. And when you think about the number of guys on the team, if you throw in all the walk-ons, 110, 150, whatever mm -hmm. it is, 70 guys never being through spring practice because of last year and just being new to the program, et cetera. It's a work in progress. And I guess if you want to get things going, you get the lines going, you get the defense going. I'm not going to say you always go last with the offense, but it, this year it's developing where the offense is kind of, especially that passing game, is kind of coming last as far as developing. And still a lot of youth. You talk about youth. some of the receivers. Uh, you mentioned Bruce and Johnson. And there's a true freshman. And uh, Jackson Ritter's been playing a lot. He hasn't uh, had a lot of time. Of course, Aniko Regani, a veteran. Tyrone Tracy, a veteran. And I think Spencer Petras are really improving week after week. And I think when you look at the offensive line, Kyler shot. Kyler shot uh, back. Three series. Mm -hmm. uh, not quite in football shape yet, according right. to Kirk Ferentz. And just nice to see him back out there and able to play. And I think he'll get more time this week and certainly be ready to go come Big Ten play. And your thoughts about the youth when you throw in Connor Colby and Mason Richmond on that offensive line. I mean, you're solid right there in the middle with Ince and Schott on each side of Tyler Linderbaum. But as you say, Kyler Schott is not going to be able to go the whole game right now. But to have seven to eight guys, again, in his Tuesday news conference, Kirk Ferentz says, you know, if you have seven to eight guys, 
for those five positions, you're feeling pretty good about yourself. So, Well, and as we talked about earlier this year, the defensive line, kind of a question mark. Uh, the bodies were there. We knew the names, just hadn't played a whole lot. But, boy, there's some guys that have really developed along that front. Well, they are getting a national reputation as a very salty group, this whole defense. But it kind of starts from the back and works its way to the front. The experience and the leadership, I think, are in that those defensive backs going forward to the linebackers, to the young guys, as you mentioned. On and uh, Justin Jacobs line. really starting to come into his own. <laughs> you know, you don't want to say it's a four-linebacker li four core, but it kind of is with Dane Belton. It's, it's hard to say either of those guys is not a starter. Either one of them is, not, is a backup because they're both kind of starters, the Leo Cash position. So, yeah, the linebacker core is good. Yeah, and it depends on what uh, you're going to see from an offensive standpoint on the opposition. You know, certainly Jacobs played a lot against Iowa State just because of the personnel and the formations that Iowa State had out there. So we're off and running on Black and Gold Breakdown. We'll take a look at the top five plays from last Saturday against Kent State when we come back. Black and Gold Breakdown on MC22 is brought to you by McGrath Family of Dealerships. Five Seasons Tire, Tom Riley Law Firm, Collins Community Credit Union, Heartland Hearing Center, and by Extreme, powered by Medica. Every second, 127 new devices connect to the internet. You can feel it happening, our digital world expanding with every breath. We're entering a whole new era of connectivity and Mediacom will be ready to power it. With one of the nation's first 10G platforms, we'll be bringing you more speed, more capacity, more security, and the power to do more than you ever dreamed possible. Today, more than ever, you need fast, reliable internet. At Mediacom, we want you to know you can count on us. Our fiber-powered 100% gigabit technology network was built for the future. We have enormous capacity and power and 99.99% .99 network reliability. So even though these are uncertain times, we're prepared. And you can be certain we'll keep your world connected. Thank you for virtual family dinners and long distance birthday wishes. Thank you for sweet streaming melodies and spontaneous dance parties. Thank you for keeping classrooms together and learning alive. Thank you to our incredible network of employees who make all these beautiful connections possible. Welcome back to Black and Gold Breakdown, the top five plays, the Hawks against Kent State, brought to you by McGrath Family of Dealerships, and the defense does it once again, put points on the board for the third consecutive week, this time a safety. And just watch this push up front after the bad snap. Crum hesitated, thought about trying to get out to the one yard line, but look at all the black jerseys swarming on the Kent State quarterback. Uh, uh, the off uh, this is, I think this is the, their Raider package, isn't it? Because I see that Joe Evans is in there. One, two, three, four, five, six, and this is the defense, Kevin, 11 hats to the football. You know, this Lucas, Luca Van Ness had a great game. Joe Evans is continuing to, to pull up uh, tackles for loss. Look, even Kayvon Merriweather in there from his safety position. Watch Linderbaum here, just another hand. Oh, Tyler Goodson. <laughs> I mean, this is, he's just such a business-like, and look at the showboating at the end. Oh, that's right, there is none. It's Tyler Goodson. He's been there before. He is just so businesslike. I mean, no high stepping, no, I mean, just, just a great solid running back. Right. Laporta across the formation and just one yard into the end zone. A really good pass from Spencer Petrus. Saw him, not a ton of room there, pretty tight window, but put it right on the hands of Sam Laporta. And this, Kevin, was after a 21 play drive. Yeah, unbelievable, 95 yards and uh, ending with a, a pass into the end zone. And it's just exactly the kind of ratio you want. 
once again, Tyler Goodson adding to that 200 plus yards rushing that the Iowa offense had on top of the 200 yards plus passing that the Iowa offense had. Boy, and Tyler Linderbaum once again just demolishes <laughs> guys along that front and the blocking superb on both of those big plays by Tyler Goodson. And then on a little stop and go move, executed to perfection. We'll talk about this X's and O's. Nika Regani uh, got by the corner, one high safety, came over late, got down to the two yard line and allowed um, Goodson to get in. But what a great move. And that, Kevin, a lot of the short passes the people see, uh, the, the square outs, the slants, that's the type of plays that set up a play like this so it can work. A little hesitation five yards into the route and then uh, nobody around him at the 20. Well, you know, you talk a lot about play action. I would love to see a little more of this pump and go. I mean, that is so old school, but it always seems to work, especially if you have, you know, a quarterback who can sell it and a wide receiver who can sell it as well. Well, and uh, I talked to Riley Moss after the game, and uh, Iowa got beat on a, a couple of uh, big plays. And also, you catch those corners peeking into the backfield. That's right. And that's where those types of plays are if going you're, to work If you're as a well. hungry defensive back, you want to get the interception, that's when you're most vulnerable. Yeah, and uh, that's one thing that Iowa prides itself on because you go back to the Iowa State game, gave up um, the long pass play right at the end of the second quarter. When I talked to Coach Ferentz at halftime, that's the first thing that he mentioned. We just cannot give up these big plays. It sounds simple, but Iowa really prides itself on that. It goes back to Norm Parker, making you work your way down That's the right. field, close in, end up uh, trying to force him to kick a field goal. So you've run six, seven minutes off the clock, long sustained drive, come away with three. Uh, it's always better to give up yards than points. That's for sure. It's all he cares about is looking at the scoreboard. How many points? Not interested a whole lot in yards. Well, a lot of places to go as far as players of the game. We'll talk uh, certainly about more than two when we come back. While a lot is changing in our world, at Mediacom, our focus remains the same, making sure you have the fastest, most reliable connection possible. During this critical time, we know your needs are changing. You may be working or learning from home, relying on telemedicine, we're finding new ways to keep everyone entertained. If you need more speed, call or go online, and Mediacom will double your speed immediately for as low as $10 more a month for one year. Right now, millions of people and billions of devices are connected to the internet. Homes, businesses, hospitals, schools. The security and reliability of these connections are more important than ever. That's why at Mediacom, we've built a network to protect them. A network that sees threats, fixes problems before they occur, and keeps you going with 99.99% network reliability. Every second, 127 new devices connect to the internet. You can feel it happening, our digital world expanding with every breath. We're entering a whole new era of connectivity and Mediacom will be ready to power it. With one of the nation's first 10G platforms, we'll be bringing you more speed, more capacity, more security, and the power to do more than you ever dreamed possible. Tyler Goodson, as uh, Kevin described, a couple of those uh, long runs, which is good to see, explosive plays, because he's the type of guy that if you give him over 20 carries, we talked about it last year, hey, feed this guy 20 to 25 times, good things are going to happen. 153 yards on the ground, that's seven yards per carry, and throw in nine receiving yards, and they've been splitting him out a lot too, Kevin, so giving um, the defense different looks as far as where Goodson's going to line up. He wants the ball, too. I mean, he wants to run it up the middle or out around the corners. I mean, he is the complete package. Plus, he can he can catch the ball. He's the second or third leading receiver on the team at this point, the leading running back receiver uh, at the very least. So Offensive Player of the Week, Tyler Goodson, which is, comes as no surprise after his performance on Saturday. Well, and then you go back to that Iowa State game, too, uh, spread Goodson out a lot and tried to get him in those crossing routes, get him in space. That's mm -hmm. the key thing. And I think when we looked at both of those running plays, that's what he can do in space. On his second one, 
you know, five yards in, probably could have been tackled. Now, there was uh, some defenders there, but boy, just makes a nifty move, quick feet, gets away from a guy and then shows his speed once he turns that corner. And he is a guy that I think would rather be outside than inside, yeah. but certainly capable to run inside the tackle. I think almost every running back would rather be outside. I would think very few, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Maybe Monte Ball. <laughs> right, exactly. That's right. That's Ron right. Dane. Right, that's right. And on the defensive side of the ball, I mean, you could probably pick, pick a number, of, but, but the leading tackler is probably a good place to start, Jack Campbell. Yeah, Jack Campbell, and I, and I think what he's done uh, three games into this and – be the leading tackler it should be right up there obviously playing linebacker spot but also forced to fumble one of those guys that's always around the football say the same thing about the Iowa State game terrific athlete outstanding basketball player played on state championship games at their teams at Cedar Falls High School's junior and senior year and saw him in high school a lot where boy, he was a guy that was 210 pounds maybe 215 up to 243 and had a chance to talk to him after the last couple of games. He's got a brother that plays for Cedar Falls. He's had a terrific year so far. Boy, is he, uh, he, he looks like an NFL linebacker already. Well, he, he almost looks like he could play defensive line, you know, if he gets a little bit bigger in the NFL. And, and just for honorable mention here, Jack Kerner is the second leading tackler on the team uh, from Saturday at his safety position. Another business-like performer for the Iowa Hawkeyes. And Lucas Van Ness, who's really coming on seven tackles, two and a half sacks, or two, two sacks, two and a half tackles for loss, a guy that's kind of making a splash on that defensive line. Yeah, there's a bunch of playmakers up front. You know, Joe Evans, uh, not a guy that's going to play 30 downs or 35 downs uh, a ball game, but boy, if he gets you 10 to 15 and can wreck that havoc up front, just like Van Ness is doing. I'm telling you, I, I'm not sure who's bigger. Joe Evans or, or Jack Campbell, <laughs> and one's playing defensive line, one's playing uh, linebacker. Yeah, that defense has uh, been fun to watch. All three levels going very, very well. Well, it's time for X's and O's, and going back to Spencer Petrus, finding Nick Nico Regini for 48 yards down to the two-yard line. That stop-and-go move, show you how it happened. In the fourth quarter, Iowa had a really big pass play. And you can see we're going to talk about the stop and go move, Spencer Petrus to Nico Regani. Pretty good situation here for the Hawkeyes up 23 to 7. It was first and 10 midfield right at the 50 yard line. And you notice during the game that Iowa had a lot of short uh, passes, slants, uh, short passes to the sideline. But this time it was Nico Regani on that stop and go. So once the snap got to Spencer Petrus, it was a three-step drop. So he looked the entire way to the left side. Regani's corner was playing about five yards off, and Nico went about five yards to the 45. Little stutter, dead leg move. Corner bit, so he slid right by him down the sideline. The safety was the only player for Kent State that had any shot. He came over late, so he was on the high side. And Spencer threw an absolute strike inside the 10-yard line to Nico Regani, who made a move and got down to the 2-yard line, did not score. But then uh, Iowa ended up scoring a touchdown on a 2-yard run by Goodson. And that gave Iowa that comfortable final score of 30-7. to seven. And the fact that this worked, that was all the set up by the short passing routes. Tyrone Tracy got more involved in the action. He was on the opposite side. But Nico Regani, the fact that he was able to beat his man, wasn't press coverage, playing about five yards off, but bid on that short route, slipped by him on the stutter step, and then Spencer Petras threw an absolute strike to Regani to get down to the two-yard line. So with the big run plays and some big pass plays that we've seen the last couple of weeks from the Hawkeyes, hopefully that will continue as Iowa faces Colorado State and then into Big Ten play. Coaches love those explosive plays and balance. Kirk Ferentz talks a lot about balance on offense. Well, the Hawkeyes ran the ball 38 times. Spencer Petrus threw it 36. We'll preview Iowa and Colorado State. Look at other big games around the Big Ten. There's a bunch of them this weekend before we get down to conference play to start the month of October. Black and Gold Breakdown. 
on MC22 is brought to you by McGrath Family of Dealerships, Five Seasons Tire, Tom Riley Law Firm, Collins Community Credit Union, Heartland Hearing Center, and by Extreme, powered by Medica. Every second, 127 new devices connect to the internet. You can feel it happening. Our digital world expanding with every breath. We're entering a whole new era of connectivity and Mediacom will be ready to power it. With one of the nation's first 10G platforms, we'll be bringing you more speed, more capacity, more security, and the power to do more than you ever dreamed possible. Today, more than ever, you need fast, reliable internet. At Mediacom, we want you to know you can count on us. Our fiber-powered 100% gigabit technology network was built for the future. We have enormous capacity and power and 99.99% .99 network reliability. So even though these are uncertain times, we're prepared. And you can be certain we'll keep your world connected. Thank you for virtual family dinners and long-distance birthday wishes. Thank you for sweet streaming melodies and spontaneous dance parties. Thank you for keeping classrooms together and learning alive. Thank you to our incredible network of employees who make all these beautiful connections possible. Today, more than ever, you need fast, reliable internet. At Mediacom, we want you to know you can count on us. Our fiber-powered 100% gigabit technology network was built for the future. We have enormous capacity and power and 99.99% .99 network reliability. So even though these are uncertain times, we're prepared and you can be certain we'll keep your world connected. Colorado State and Iowa meet on the gridiron for the first time ever. Colorado State does have one victory against a Big Ten opponent. That was Michigan State. I don't think it would happen this year. However, no. Michigan State playing very, very good. And you know, Kevin, I think you go back to, hey, just a little bit like last week, Colorado State I don't think is as good as Kent State, even though coming off a victory against uh, Toledo, lost uh, badly to a very good South Dakota State team and then uh, lost to Vanderbilt at home. <laughs> it's not good at all. So it's a, a team that's big up front, though, mm -hmm. kind of Big Ten-like linemen. And this is a, a take care of business type of game. I think what we saw last weekend with balance, some big plays, tough defense, no letdown because it's a short week after Colorado State. You got a Friday night game at Maryland. Well, I, I'll tell you, Coach Ferentz during his Tuesday news conference was kind of struggling to find really great things to say about Colorado State. They just have not been productive on either side of the ball. But I'll tell you what, this Trey McBride, who I've been hearing a little yep. bit about, this tight end, 6'4", 6'5", 250, um, is, is their number one, two, and three, you know, well, 30 option. receptions. <laughs> 30 receptions in three games for well over 300 yards. Um, he, here's a little something about him. In high school, he holds a school record for most home runs on the baseball team, for his high school baseball team, for, for a career. The most RBI for a career and the most points scored on a basketball court for a career at his high school. So, you know, he, so, so you're saying they're recruiting uh, Major League Baseball uh, <laughs> potential a, players? A multi-sport <laughs> athlete, which you're very which you familiar love, with. But you love. You yep, do absolutely. love that. And, and, you know, I'm not sure if he went to a huge school. I know his, his brother's also a football player. Uh, but, you know, I, I know Kirk Ferentz loves those guys that play multiple sports, you know, For the sure. guys that wrestle and play line, the guys that play basketball. I mean, every year we talk – to these guys during the media day saying, what's the best five guys you could put on a basketball team and could you beat the Iowa basketball team? And of course, all the football players say, oh yeah, we, we, we could beat the Iowa basketball team. Well, we you remember uh, Steve Adazio was the, Steve Adazio. Uh, the, was the head coach at Boston College when Iowa defeated Boston College at the, at the Yankee Bowl. Stadium That's at the right. Pinstripe Bowl. That's right. So 
You look at, uh, he's trying to really resurrect this program. Very cold memory for oh, you, yeah, I'm very sure. Very much so. Oh, geez, it gives me chills now. <laughs> but Colorado State, you remember Sonny Lubeck? Yes. I really had that program yes. rolling, right. top 25. Mm -hmm. But the last three plus years, nine and 22. So mm -hmm. Coach Adazio is trying to build that program and you know, going to do it in a very difficult place. Had a lot of great things to say about uh, the Hawkeyes coming in here, but this should be a game where Iowa takes care of business, not unlike last week, and moves to 4-0. and And as we take a look at some of the uh, standings in the East and the West, uh, all of them, matter of fact, Kevin, we've been talking Michigan State. Mel Tucker has this thing grooving pretty good this year. I, I, I watched their first game, and I'm like, oh, this is not the Michigan State game that I, the Michigan State team that I expected. I was very confident well, that they were last year at Kinnick. Yeah, I, I was very confident that they were going to beat Miami, and they did. And I was just looking forward in the schedule. I'll just throw this out at you to, to think about. The last game of the season, Ohio State versus Michigan, will that decide the East, or will it be the last game, Michigan State versus Penn State? And you could probably make the case for either of those scenarios. Yeah, to me, it still runs through Columbus, Ohio. You still until runs something different. But that's an interesting game. Penn State, Michigan State always play at the end of the year. Some of them haven't been so great as of late. This one could be uh, spectacular. Penn State, of course, uh, come to Iowa City the second week of October. I think Maryland, Iowa's first Big Ten opponent, 3-0, and oh, but I'm not sure we know a whole lot about them. No, yet. not at this point, though. They do have a lot of speed. They have a lot of talent on the outside at the skill positions. I, I just think that Iowa inside is just going to be too tough for them. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. Some of the other games, though, that are going on in the Big Ten this week. Yeah, we'll take a look at uh, the West real quick as Iowa is the only undefeated team. Illinois 1-3 and three after, <laughs> after that big victory against uh, Nebraska. Uh, the West is 2-5 and five in conference. They are not winning against the East, obviously. The Northwestern struggled, got down big time at Duke, fought back a little bit, but lost that game. Uh, Nebraska... Played well, Played did well. some good things. Though I, I would Oklahoma. say this, Oklahoma is not a number four team in the country, in my opinion. I, I, they're a good team, but they are not a number four team the way Nebraska played them. And Wisconsin off a of bye week, we'll see. Uh, the Badgers never discount the Badgers, and uh, Minnesota plays Bowling Green for their homecoming this weekend as we take a look at some of the big games in the Big Ten. Well, Notre Dame, Wisconsin. Yeah, uh, that's got to be that, that's the leader the, at Soldier Field. Though, though you're talking about how much you're kind of liking Michigan, Michigan Rutgers is going to be a test for Michigan, I think. You think? I, I, think don't, that, I don't think that'll be close. That That is two 3-0 teams. Uh, they're both a little bit of a surprise. The other one that I'm kind of interested in is Kent State, Maryland. We just got done with Kent State. We're going to have Maryland coming up. And then Illinois-Purdue because they're two games that Iowa has on the – uh, on the horizon. I mean, yeah. just see how that. As they say, out. both need a victory. <laughs> both of them need a victory. And, and David Bell, the, the very talented the wide receiver for Purdue, went out of the game last week in concussion protocol. So not sure if he'll be available this weekend or not. Hey, appreciate you stopping by. Thank you very much, Rob. <laughs> Enjoy your insight today. I, I always like uh, sitting with you during talk sports, and this was a treat for me to come on today. Yeah, appreciate it. That's black and gold breakdown for this week.